Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Mike, and this is what I call another episode of Creation Bites. Last time I did something like this, I was showing how sea turtles automatically, when they're born, they know to dig through the sand and automatically find the ocean and go to it in a matter of about three or four minutes. The question is, who taught that baby turtle as soon as it's hatched to go right to the ocean because if it doesn't it's not going to live let's start out with scripture on this one john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god we know that's jesus christ and the same meaning the word jesus christ was in the beginning with god and you know what genesis 1 says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth so the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, that's the Bible telling you that evolution never happened, that God created everything, and a literal reading of Genesis chapter 1 will tell you that God created everything in six days, and he created them exactly the way they are now. It didn't start out 13 and a half billion years ago, which by the way, they're going to have to change that number because of the web uh, telescope, but that's another episode. But anyway, it didn't start out 13 and a half billion years ago out of nothing. And then boom, everything comes into uh, place everything starts out as a small cell and then these cells divide and then they start growing into trees and sharks and monkeys and goldfish and then eventually us that's not how it happened it happened when God created everything and what I like to do in this is just look at nature itself let nature itself teach you that evolution just doesn't work. The last time I did this, I talked about the sea turtles. Have you ever paid attention to um, how kangaroos are born? Now, I know we live in America and we just don't see very many kangaroos here except they're in a zoo somewhere or in a petting farm. And kangaroos are fascinating and especially when it comes to their birth because when a, when a mother kangaroo is ready to give birth this little bitty uh, embryo not any bigger than a kidney bean comes crawling out of, of her birth canal and it automatically begins to climb its way up through that thick fur that the mother has on her find the pouch that mother kangaroos have once it's in the pouch or at the top of the pouch it knows to go inside the pouch and there's a couple of feeder nipples inside that pouch and this embryo of a kangaroo that's just been born all this takes place like I say in about two or three minutes this baby embryo kangaroo has to find the right nipple instead of another one because the other one is for a young joey that the mother kangaroo had about three or four months before this one see the mother gives out two different types of milk one milk is for the older joey that hops around and he finds mother when he's hungry and he feeds off mother and he feeds off one nipple and gets a different kind of milk and the little bitty embryo joey once he has found his way and understand this that the mother uh, kangaroo does not help at all in in the embryo finding its way through the fur to the pouch down into the pouch and finding that right nipple if that embryo of a kangaroo happens to fall off or is unable to find the pouch by itself it'll die now my question always is how is it that this embryo of a kangaroo 
Who taught it that once it was born, once it feels air on its skin, to go immediately and start crawling up toward the pouch, not down. See, the embryo kangaroo now knows the difference between up and down. It crawls up through the fur to the pouch, down into the pouch, finding that right set of milk, and it latches on there, and it'll stay on there for about 30 weeks until it's grown enough to be able to come out of the pouch. Who taught it to do that? You see, if we, if we think that evolution as a force, along with teaching the sea turtles how to find the ocean, evolution as a force is teaching young embryo kangaroos to crawl up the mother's belly, down into the pouch, and finding the right milk for it to be able to survive. And you see, you either have to have that happen immediately, or it takes millions of years for the kangaroo species, whatever they say it came from, hundreds of millions of years ago, who taught it how to do that? Because if it doesn't do it right over a, a, a progression of time, then the species dies off. It doesn't have a chance. It's all on that embryo with the kangaroos knowing how to do the exact right thing. If this embryo makes one false move, if it steers to the left, to the right, if it goes down, or it just doesn't crawl, or it gets down into the pouch but fails to find the nipple with the right milk on it, then it's going to die. And how is it that every single kangaroo embryo that's born knows exactly what to do as soon as it's born for the survival of the species. You see, the Bible tells us, I, I like this, Job 12, but ask now the beast and they shall teach thee and the fowls of the air and they shall tell thee or speak to the earth and it shall teach thee and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? You see, the Bible is telling you that God not only has authority and power and is the creator of the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, uh, the fish of the sea, and so on, and all of these things are in God's hand. God is the one who showed the embryo of the kangaroo how to climb up that fur, go down into the pouch, and find the right milk that it's going to need. God is the one who taught it that. And, God, and that same God is the God over us. And he is the one that right now is giving us our breath in order to live. By the way, I got something else I want to throw in here real quick. Um, have you ever, have you ever, let me put this on the screen. You ever seen kangaroos licking their forearms? Okay. I learned about, I, I learned about this several years ago and it just fascinated me. And I thought, boy, they, they must like their arms clean or something like that. When animals lick themselves, it's usually to clean off. No, it's not to keep clean. The reason why kangaroos lick their forearms, especially in the heat of the day, is that God has designed in their forearms a huge bundle of blood vessels. And all of the blood inside the kangaroo flows through that series of blood vessels in their forearm. So that when the kangaroo spreads saliva from its mouth all up and down the forearm, the dry air 
will cause that saliva to evaporate quickly and it will cool the blood that flows inside of the kangaroo. In fact, here is a, um, a, a, uh, a picture showing you that here is the kangaroo's body. Uh, you can see how hot it is. And right here on the forearm, it's licking its forearm. Right there on the forearm, it shows that it's cool. It actually works. Again, who taught the kangaroo how to cool itself? And how, how did the kangaroo develop all of these bundles of blood vessels in both of its forearms in order for the process of licking it to cool its body in that Australian heat. You see, it just... Creation bites evolution, and creation wins every time. When you think about the wonders of this world, it's not evolutionary force that put everything together in such an amazing way. It was the hand of God. And that very hand of God is the hand that's on my life. And I'd like for it to be the hand that's on your life as well. Gently guiding you into our eternal home. This is Pastor Mike with another Creation Bites. God bless you. We'll see you next time.